Sora is taking over on episode 226 of The Edward Show. I am obsessed with Sora. It has captured my imagination. If you don't know, Sora is OpenAI's new text-to-video model. When it is released, you will be able to generate photorealistic videos with a text prompt. OpenAI last night released 30 videos as examples unedited videos just entirely made with AI. And I was scared. I was excited. I was shocked. I wrote down eight video ideas. If you don't know, I make daily videos about marketing and technology, mostly marketing. But if there's something on my mind, like Sora, then I'm going to talk about that. And Sora is heavily on my mind. It's very interesting. I was one of the first people to try ChatGPT. I use text to image all the time. I use AI-generated images in my marketing all the time, and I am sure that I will be using AI-generated videos in my marketing as well. So I want to talk about a few things with Sora on this episode. First is going to be about how Sam Altman uses his personal branding to soften the blow of how frighteningly photorealistic Sora is. I mean, these videos look real if you want them to look real, and the animated videos look completely studio-made and professional. They are in 60 frames per second, super high resolution. It's insane. So that's what the first one's going to be about. And then I'm going to just share two threads on Twitter that I found that I thought captured this well. And you know what? And then if there's time, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to, I'm going to share this story because I just told this story. I was out with somebody. It's actually 12.08 a.m. here in Poland where I am recording this. I'm from Brooklyn, traveling through Europe in Poland. It is 12.08 a.m. I just got home and I told the story of how I was one of the first people to try ChatGPT. It's a fun story and I'll share that too if we have time. That's what's, that's what's on the agenda for today. Normally, this is my growth hacking and growth marketing podcast. And today, it's just, it's just the Edward show where I am going to be talking about stuff that Edward is crazy fascinated by. So that's Sora. So the first thing is Sam Altman, the way that he does his messaging. Sam Altman is the CEO of OpenAI and one of the founders. He used to be president of Y Combinator, brilliant guy. I think Paul Graham, the founder of Y Combinator, which is the most successful startup accelerator in the world, said that like Sam Altman, I, I, forget, I forget the exact quote, but he's like, I would, if Sam Altman and a bunch of other people were alone on an island, I would count on Sam Altman to, to survive and become king of the island. Like that's what, I think Paul Graham said about Sam Altman is that Sam Altman is an absolute killer. So he's an absolute killer. But what he does is he posts the cutest messages on X, the most innocuous sounding messages on X. It was like harmless sounding messages and casual messages on X on Twitter, which takes the edge off of how scary Sora is, how scary OpenAI's text to video model Sora is. Because you see the potential for propaganda and for displacement of jobs and all sorts of stuff with Sora because it is so incredibly realistic. And Sam Altman is just cracking jokes the whole time while OpenAI is putting out more professional announcements on, on X and on their website about it, about Sora. OpenAI will, is like announcing our new text to video model and some more corporate speak. You know, we are going to be working with bias experts and propaganda experts and all sorts of stuff to make sure that it is used safely. And Sam Altman, he, it, all he does is he's like, give me some prompts and I'm going to give you back some videos. And so he picks great prompts. And one of them that gets more attention on his feed is a video of two golden retrievers doing a podcast on top of a mountain. And it's so cute and it kind of hides the seriousness of Sora. And Sam is so playful about it. I think the way that he goes doing this is very is just very brilliant. What something else that he did is he's trying to raise seven trillion dollars. It's with a T, seven trillion dollars for a new AI chip company, doing this largely in the UAE, if I believe. And so he puts up a tweet last night when people are really freaking out about Sora at the height. And he puts up a tweet and he says, F it. Why not eight? Why not eight? Why not eight trillion? And it was so funny that even Elon Musk commented with a laughing face. So, so throughout, throughout all of this, he's making jokes. 
and I, it makes him this very likable person. And a lot of the people that I know like him a lot. I like him a lot. I, I like the personality that he puts through. And I admire him too. I think it's so crazy, so cool. Do, is Sora a good thing? My, my brother just asked me, do you think Sora is a good thing? I think it's inevitable. I think it's an inevitable thing. I think it's a bad thing. I think it's an exciting thing. And I am excited. It's going to happen either way. There's going to be a lot of bad stuff with it and also a lot of good stuff. And I would rather have somebody like Sam Altman doing it than maybe a corrupt government actor. All right, so now I'm going to share this thread by Pietro Shirano. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. He's a good follow on, on Twitter. His handle is at Schirano, S-K-I-R-A-N-O. He does a lot of stuff with artificial intelligence. And he posts really good information about it. And so he said, he said, once you know GPT-5 created Sora, everything makes sense. And this is a joke, but the truth is, now things are really happening so fast. This was an enormous announcement. Sora was, it came out of nowhere. People were not expecting this. And it begs the question, what else is behind the scenes? What else do they have? Do they have AGI? There are rumors that they do. There are rumors that they have artificial general intelligence. And I think it's for imagination. It's, it's an interesting question. Something that I learned when I was a boy, I was getting a tour of Washington, D.C. with my, my school class. We went down from Brooklyn to D.C. We were getting a tour. And I think a friend turned to me and said, you know, the snipers on the roof of the White House can hear us speaking from here. And I'm like, no, they can't. And the friend is like, yes, they can. And we turned towards the White House and, and we're, like, we, we're like, if you can hear us, wave back. And the guys on top of the White House waved back to us. And we were so far away. And it showed me that most people don't really know how sophisticated a lot of the tech that is out there really is because a lot of it is not accessible to the public. And what OpenAI is doing is they are just making things accessible to the public before they can get restricted by government. I think if they waited too long, these things might not be released. So this once you know GPT-5 created Sora tweet really made me think what else is out there? What else do they have? And I bet it is equally jaw-dropping, equally shocking. And the last thread that I want to share, I'm just going to read it. This is from at... Enuriru, E N U R I R U. His name is Dennis. He said, OpenAI just introduced Sora, new text to video AI model. While everyone is just posting mind blowing examples, I want to talk about the consequences. One, clearly this isn't the end of the road. Generation quality and consistency, the ability to maintain story, style, and details will get better and costs will go down. Videos today are already hard to distinguish from reality, and soon it will be outright impossible even with algorithms or other neural networks. Two, right now, pics of three-fingered kids and six-legged cats as quote-unquote war victims are racking up hundreds of thousands of retweets on X. People are overlooking even such obvious flaws, not to mention the more sophisticated examples above. And that's despite X having community notes, where tweets with fake or misinformation get tagged with a debunking label and links to trusted sources. Other social networks don't have anything like this at all. This is a great point. Number three, creating a completely non-existent news topic or properly heating up the right one will become even easier. People trust videos. Whip up videos from various angles Post them and bots on something like ChatGPT will comment, discuss, and retweet. We live in a world where not just news is written based on tweets, but political decisions are made based on the same tweets, which, of course, don't represent reality for a second. Number four, don't think OpenAI will be a force for good, imposing censorship and preventing the generation of deep fakes and other disinformation. Well, they might but they still don't possess unique and irreplaceable knowledge. Other researchers and developers with similar solutions are only a couple of years behind. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Number five, as for flesh videographers, directors, and other filmmakers, those who say AI won't replace you, a person with AI will, are only half right. 
This is a transitional period that won't last very long. It's hard to predict, but I give this industry 10, maybe 15 years at most. Neural net, a neural network with literally the experience and knowledge of all humanity will be able to create much deeper and more engaging stories and most importantly, personalized ones. Yeah, this thread really got to me when I read it. It is a very profound thread. Number six, the entertainment industry will change. Endless, personalized, interactive multiplayer series on any topic will likely emerge within a few years. Personalized porn naturally will be a thing too. I know you thought of it. And the final one, number seven. In conclusion, I want to say that you, my dear readers, are among the 0.01% of people who have a clear understanding of these technologies, their capabilities, and the future. Deceiving everyone else is a piece of cake. Use this knowledge for good while you still can. Tell everyone, trusting your own eyes and ears is no longer an option. Wow, what a thread. All right, last thing on this episode, I'm going to share the story of how I was one of the first people to use ChatGPT. So the date is December 2nd, 2022. One of my startups, Commit Club, is launching on Product Hunt. We prepare everything. The launch is set. Actually, it was supposed to go out a week before. Something within the Product Hunt servers got messed up. So we pushed up to a, a week in the future, which ended up being December 2nd. I was living in Barcelona. I woke up at 9 a.m. in Barcelona. I was waking up later then, and I, I woke up at 9 a.m. in Barcelona, which was midnight on the West Coast, which is Product Hunt. It operates on a 24-hour cycle. Things are, remain on the front page of Product Hunt. It's the best place to launch any technology product. They stay up for 24 hours. That 24-hour period starts at midnight. So I wake up at 9 a.m. in Barcelona, which is midnight PST, to manage it. And right away, we're out of the gate. We're doing well. Number three, number two, then number one. And for the first half of the day, we are number one. We're getting so much traffic, so many users. It's, it's amazing. And then I notice around 11 a.m., there's this thing with this weird logo and this weird name it's called ChatGPT. It has this like purple green logo and it's slowly rising on Product Hunt. But it's only number six, so it's not really a threat. But then it becomes number five, and then it becomes number four, and it looks so weird. And the name is ChatGPT. It's not even like a memorable name, not even a good name. But then it's number three, so I'm like, okay, let me try this thing. It's climbing fast, and my mind was blown. This was its launch day, December second, and then it was number two, number, and then it beat us with number one, and then it just completely blew us away. One of the most transformational products of all time, and I stayed up until even though I woken up earlier than normal. I went to sleep later than normal, just staying up playing with ChatGPT. And this is before there were a lot of sensors put in. ChatGPT would say almost anything. And a lot of people are thinking that Sora is kind of going to be the same. Day one will be exciting. Very quickly, so many safeguards will, put, will be put in. DALI, for example, their text-to-image model, a friend complained that it should be capable of doing photorealistic images, but everything kind of looks cartoonish. And even with the right prompting, you can't get it to not look cartoonish just because of all the safeguards that they have in. And I think Sora might be the same. A lot of people are saying Sora will probably not look like the previews because of all the safeguards. And ChatGPT used to say anything, and now it's not like that at all. It's a complaint that a lot of people have. And so I think that story is kind of indicative of what might happen with Sora and this technology, but I'm still very excited by it. I can't wait to see what happens. And I am probably going to be making four to six videos on it tomorrow just because it's so exciting. So this is episode 226 of The Edward Show. It is now 1226 a.m. on a Friday night here in Poland. And I'm going to edit this and push it out to you. And I hope you like it as much as I liked recording it. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye now.